This episode is sponsored by Ground News. What up, what up world, it's your homeboy Wordplay TJ and I'm back with another video for you. This time around, I'm gonna tell you why the music business is closed. Stay tuned. <gasps> so I've been making music for the past 20 years and I'm disheartened. I'm not at the bottom of the list of artists that are struggling to gain fans or struggling to like earn some revenue from music. Like I'm doing okay, but I'm not at a level where I can make this my full-time profession. It's evident because I'm making these videos for you because I have a full-time job as an educator. I'm just not where I need to be as a musician, even though I've been in it for a long time and even though I do have a fan base. So this leaves me feeling stuck, like I can't break to the next level. And why do I feel stuck? Why is the question? And that's the reason why I think the music business is closed. So like any business, my business ebbs and flows, but it's been challenging to break through the door. And the door that I'm talking about is virality. So I'll give you an example of this. In 2011, my single Breakfast and Biggie was premiered on MTV. And that happened because I just so happened to go viral on a platform called Your MTV. This virality caught the attention of Sway Calloway, who's a legend in the business. He's a radio host currently. He's a host of multiple shows. He's been on MTV since almost its inception. And he's a legend in the hip hop world. And Sway chose my song to put on TV. He also chose my song to put in front of Ja Rule. And that was important. And what's important about it is that even though I had an opportunity to submit my 15 minutes of fame, to take my career to the next level, I messed it up. And I messed it up because I was too sick, too tired, too overwhelmed, and I missed the, the, the deadline for my interview. I, I didn't wake up soon enough, and that is the biggest flaw in my career. I don't usually have a lot of regrets, but the only thing I do regret is not making that interview. But the reason why I had that chance is because I went viral. I believe that virality is the key to making it to the next level as a musician. And honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm a little concerned at, at, at that phenomena. I believe that that's not it shouldn't be the only way to make it to success, but virality equals what we used to call a hit record in the past. I made a video so long ago talking about virality in music and uh, the source, The Pudding, when they made a video with Vox. So I, I talked about this article that they made that talked about uh, where 25% of top charting things on, on Spotify were from uh, being being viral on TikTok. What's even more surprising about that 25% is that 12% of those songs were from independent artists. And an even smaller percentage of these individuals have managed to sustain their popularity. So virality may be a door to getting to the next level or being successful as an independent musician or a musician in general going into the mainstream, but there's another part to the equation that we're not really seeing. There's not an unlimited invitation to the party, and that's because I believe that other part of the equation is money. So before I elaborate on why money is virality in 2024, I want to introduce our sponsor, Ground News. As an educator, I find myself teaching students how to be media literate, and media literacy is something that is needed in today's news landscape especially with so much bias that is out there in the algorithms, just tuning us towards what we agree with instead of giving us multiple perspectives. 
That's why I personally choose Ground News as my news source that I look at every single day. It's an app that showed you political bias, factuality, and even has a blind spot report that allows you to see where, you know, one story may be being told by one side of media or one side of a opinion or bias than the other. With Ground News, you get a diverse perspective of different news sources, news outlets, and perspectives from all over the spectrum and you get a rating of how factual each source should be. I've been using Ground News to keep up with stories about music and politics because I'm politically active and I wanna see our politicians do more for the music business, especially the independent music business. So if you wanna check out Ground News, go to check.ground.news forward slash WPTJ in order to get 15% off your subscription to Ground News. Now back to the content. So the primary reason why I think that money is the thing that will help you go viral is because money will give you an infrastructure. It will give you the ability to take the time you need to do the things you need in order to shoot multiple shots or play the game or play the lottery of trying to go viral. This is why a lot of people still want to get signed in 2024. They're going to own what you make in most cases, unless you have some leverage. And then they're going to take that ownership and sort of charge you a fee in order to in order to recoup all of the money that they've given you. But I do believe a record deal is a way to get access to the resources that you need, a team, uh, marketing, management, uh, all of the different supports that an artist would need in order for something to, to have more of a chance to go viral. There's a second reason why I think money is also important in this situation. It's because social media no longer values organic growth. Every social media platform has a cycle. They introduce a feature, they have people come on and use that feature and have some success with that feature. They put ads on it, so it, they run ads to a new audience, and then they charge you money in order to get to that same audience of subscribers, followers, or whoever it is that was getting your attention before. They do it, every platform does it. Right now it's Reels and Shorts and um, a bit of TikTok at the moment. It's just one of those things where you can't escape. And at the end of that cycle is always a payment. You have to pay in order to get to your audience. And that's one of the things that's one of the things that baffles me so, so much in this ecosystem. And I fell into this trap for such a long time. I was paying one hundred and fifty dollars a month in order to like raise my profile and get noticed on things like Instagram and Facebook. What I learned is even though that was a tax deductible expense, it wasn't necessarily worth it for my return on investment. It worked well for some people, but not all people. I got on more playlists. I got more followers on the uh, streaming services and I got more attention towards my work. But what I didn't get is sustainable, long lasting fans. And that's the frustrating piece about this social media cycle is that it's basically a trap. And because I learned that it's a trap, I'm gonna teach you how to try to get out of it. I wanna be clear, I don't have all the answers, but these are things that I'm doing in order to try to get out of the trap of having to go viral, the trap of having to um, pay money in order for people to see what I'm making. There's a little bit of that virality piece at the end of this, but I think ultimately what I wanna do is expose myself to more and more and more individuals on social media and different marketing platforms, and then slowly make my way to a viable audience. For the most part, I've been impatient, and so I wanna tell you four ways that you can grow your momentum for free and hopefully out of this equation, something will go viral and take you to the next level. The first thing that I always tell people is consistently make good music and that's never going to change. The key part of this is that you're making good music and you're making it consistently. People will gravitate towards somebody that is 
actively pursuing their dream and actively going for the thing. And don't let the distractions get in your way. Make good songs, improve the songs that you make on a regular basis, and then put them out on a consistent basis. It could be every week, it could be every month, it could be every few months. But what you wanna do is make sure that you are putting the work out, putting the work in, and then making sure to share that work. If you don't share your music on a consistent basis that you make, you're setting yourself up for failure to begin with. The next thing is know where your strengths are. So YouTube is a platform that I like the most, and YouTube honestly is a, is a safe place for me. It's the second largest search engine in the world. It's owned by Google. Anything that I share on YouTube is indexed by Google. Google is where everybody goes to search their things anyway. It's not gonna be hard to find me if I put it on YouTube. So I make sure that I'm in YouTube's partner program. I make sure my music is distributed to YouTube. I post my own music to YouTube. I post performance videos to YouTube. Um, and I make sure that my catalog is there for people to hear. So what I recommend is pick one or even two platforms and just double down on those platforms. Be as creative as you wanna be, but you don't have to be silly or ridiculous. You don't have to make a caricature of yourself because people are gonna read through that anyway. So don't fake the funk, be you, and then put stuff out. The other part that I can say is do what's free. Pandora Amp, and I've made a video for that, Pandora Amp is still available for people to sign up for and uh, promote their music to Pandora fans for eight weeks at a time. There is a process to joining Pandora Amp. You have to sign up for the platform, you have to submit a, um, uh, an album or some sort of single in, order, in, in the system, and you have to have your music distributed to Pandora. And all three of those things need to happen before you're able to promote for free. But free promotion is free promotion, and I'm gonna take it. So watch that video on Pandora Amp, and then tell me if you've seen some success down in the comment section. The last part is engaging my fans. I have a newsletter and right now I use that newsletter in order to talk to my fans. I also use this comment sections to talk to people that support my music. So if you haven't heard my music, go listen to it right here on this channel leave a comment and most likely I will interact with you. Either I will heart it or if I'm not overwhelmed and don't have a lot to do, I will comment and say thank you for, uh, for loving the music and sharing the music around. The most important part about this is to engage your fans on a regular basis. Make sure they're not missing you on at least a, a monthly or weekly basis. I would say monthly is a good frequency, a healthy frequency, so people aren't burnt out on you. You want people to join your tribe. And the more you can communicate with your tribe about what you're doing, giving them updates, showing them pictures, being yourself, uh, giving them more music, the more that you can encourage that tribe to grow. So that's it. Hopefully you can take these steps to grow yourself in your music business. Uh, hopefully you're not discouraged by the music business being closed, but you see a little crack in the door. You create your own door uh, to the music business. And even though it's shut down for you know our, uh, us everyday musicians, that doesn't mean that we can't find another door and we can't find a key to unlock it. Before I let you go, be sure to sign our petition. Go to change.org forward slash music labor and also look in the description for that link to sign our petition in order to see musicians get a living wage and protest next May 2025 in support of that living wage for musicians. So that's it. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section. I appreciate you watching this video. Be sure to share it with somebody that might get something out of it. And until next time, it's your homeboy Wordplay TJ. Peace. And when I wake up, take me home now. I'm staring at the phone now. Yeah. Okay. Three months gone, hanging on messages. And only adults know what the message is.